Okay, this is uh, Costco's, and I've thought long and hard about how I'm, how I'm going to deliver this lesson and about how all the cost curves work. And I've eventually decided to, to do it through a numerical example. But just to simplify it totally, is that the marginal cost curve will always go to the bottom of the average cost curve. And what we've actually just learned is the fact that when, if I was to draw the product, the, the product lines above this, so this was product here, and this is output along here, draw a line up there that when the marginal product is increasing the marginal cost curve is falling and as that starts to fall then the marginal cost curve will start to rise the the uh, average product curve will go like this and as that as the average cost curves as the average cost curve starts to rise starts to rise which will be about there the average product curve here will start to fall. So we'll have that sort of relationship between the law of diminishing returns and the cost curves. If you can remember that, students will get that wrong all the time. So let's get some wiper on there. Okay, but if you can just stick with this a little bit, I'll be as quick as I possibly can, hopefully get the numbers right. Right, so we've got output, not one, two, three, four, five, and we've got total fixed costs along here. If it's a fixed cost, it does not change with output. So that's going to be 40, 40, 40, 40, 40 all the way down here. Then we've got the total variable cost. Of course, the variable cost will be zero at zero. So that line will go there. We can work out these two points because they give us the total cost curve, very kind of them. So 60 minus 40, your total variable cost will be 20. And 66 minus 40, your total variable cost will be 26. So we've got the total variable cost line now. Now I've got the total cost line, which is the addition of the fixed cost plus the total variable costs. Pretty easy stuff. 40 plus zero is 40, 40 plus six is 46, 40 plus 11 is 51, and 40 plus 15 is 55. So now we've got a total cost curve. Then we've got the average fixed cost, which is quite easy to work out. It is the total fixed cost divided by the output. Call the first one a blank. It's 40 divided by zero is really infinity. And then 40 divided by one is 40. 40 divided by 2 is 20, 40 divided by 3 is 13.333, 40 divided by 4 is 10, and 40 divided by 5 is 8. Okay, I wasn't meaning to ignore you there, I was just writing on the board. Right, so now I've got the average fixed cost, and then we do the average cost, which will be the total cost divided by the output. It's not the average variable cost, it's the average cost. So once again, 40, uh, 40 divided by zero will just leave. 40, 40 divided by one is 40. Uh, sorry, the average cost. 46 divided by one is 46. 51 divided by two is uh, 25.5. 55 divided by three is, is uh, 55 divided by three is 18.33, would that be right? 3824, 18.33, yeah, correct. And 60 divided by four is 15, and 66 divided, 66 divided by five will be 13.2, 13.2, sorry, you're seeing a teacher under, under a bit of pressure here as I'm trying to work out all the numbers in my head. The marginal cost, so it's easy to work out, the first marginal cost is, call that blank again, is 46. The next one is 5, 4, 5, and 6. So then the marginal cost is starting to go up, which must mean that the law of diminishing returns here has started to set in. Now remember, all you really need to know is this. Okay, but earlier on I just drew this little diagram here rather than me drawing it all live because it's not really going to work, but you can see that the average, the average fixed cost is always going to fall because you're dividing the total fixed cost by an ever bigger number. The marginal cost falls rapidly and then starts to rise, and when it starts to rise here, right when it starts to rise here, so the marginal cost curve would fall and then it would start to rise rapidly. That would be the marginal cost curve. The average costs are falling all the way through. We haven't got to the bottom of the, of the curve yet. And we've got three lines on there. The fixed cost line, if you were to draw it like this, if you do business studies, you do this with break even. 
You've got the fixed cost line just goes straight across there. The total cost line obviously goes up and up and up. But here we're working out the averages and the marginal cost line. So hopefully that has sort of made sense when you've looked at that on there. It just says on the question, students may be asked to work out, I think it says that on the syllabus, students should be able to calculate different costs from given data. Yep. They should also be able to draw and interpret cost curves. Right. Interpreting the cost curve, the average fixed cost is always falling. When the law of diminishing returns sets in, the marginal cost curve starts to go up. The average cost curve is always falling. I can't see what else you can say about that. And uh, that has covered that part of the course. Okay, this is uh, the long run average cost curve and the lesson 28 and economies and diseconomies of scale. Now here we have costing up here, outputs along here, the average cost curve falls with uh, economies of scale and the average cost curve rises with diseconomies of scale. The definition is average cost per unit fall, diseconomies of scale, average cost per unit rise. Remember the long run is when all factors are variable. So you can choose upon your own scale of plan. You can make it absolutely massive. If you can make it huge, you can achieve economies of scale. So what are economies of scale? They are technical economies, the bigger machines, the more you can produce there for your productivity is higher per worker. Marketing economies is because you can then pay for advertising space on TV and get a much wider field in terms of your marketing. It's also cheaper to buy goods in bulk because the, the firm is larger. Financial economies is probably cheaper to borrow money. Managers because they can specialize in what they are best at. And research economies is that each worker can, sorry, it's easier for a large firm to undertake research and development. So those are internal to the firm. We also have external economies of scale, which is quite a small thing. Well, it's quite an important thing for a firm, obviously. Is quite a short thing on the syllabus is when you have loads of different firms all together and therefore you have loads of skills within that area so it's easier to find workers within that area also people know that that's where all the firms are so they're more likely to go to that area to to find out what your product is okay in the short run of course we always have you know, one fixed factor of production this is the law of diminishing returns again i'm just going to give it to you again marginal product is rising remember you have five acres of land one worker not a lot of output then the second worker much more output the marginal product is much higher third worker great guy doing really well his output is is whatever is the highest number of units and then the marginal product starts to fall that will mean the marginal cost curve will start to rise so at this point here the law of diminishing returns is starting to set in and when the average product starts to fall the average cost will also start to rise okay but those are short run costs and finally we have the minimum efficient scale this is the lowest point on the average total cost curve sometimes they say it is l-shaped which means that you get to this point and then it's difficult to reduce your costs even further once you're at that point. So the minim minimum efficient scale may exist for a long time. The, minute, the minimum efficient scale will be different for loads of different firms. For instance, car firms will have a pretty large minimum, minimum efficient scale. Uh, the airline industry producing airplanes is very, very expensive. So there's one company that produces them in America. The Airbus is produced in, in Europe, is it? and in america they produce the boeing i think that's right so their minimum efficient scale will be huge because you've got to have such a a large manufacturing plant so this is to do with cost curves here and here long run short run i hope that's okay